Hey guys, this is Curtis Alexander. Let's talk about some simple things that you can do to improve your gut health. And in this case, five simple things. I've done videos before where I've talked about supplements, medications, things that can hurt your gut health. And I've said you need to improve that. And people have been like, well, what can I do? So these are the simple things that I'm talking about. And you're going to notice a trend as I go through these. You're going to see that we're going to talk a lot about thyroid, liver function, and stress levels playing a huge role in your gut health. So first and foremost, make sure that you are not consuming any seed oils or any polyunsaturated fatty acids. So seed oils are basically going to be things like safflower oil, canola oil. The, the only fats, I guess, you should be cooking in or consuming are ghee, butter, coconut oil. Those are your big three. Avoid processed foods. They contain a ton of seed oils. The reason why seed oils, I, I can't think of a good thing that they do in your body, but one of the worst things they do is they're very, very tough on your thyroid. Okay, and that's gonna be, it. most people don't realize how important that is for your gut health, and we'll get to that, okay? Next thing you wanna do, avoid low thyroid foods. Um, I've talked about cruciferous vegetables, um, low carbohydrate diets, those sorts of things. A good example also though is beans. They contain a fiber that can ferment and actually be harmful to the gut. When it's harmful to the gut, you can get that permeability. You can get things getting through the gut that were never designed to get through the gut, okay? Next thing, we've got rid of seed oils. We're, we're getting rid of foods that are harmful to our thyroid. Next thing is you need to work on eating things that improve your thyroid. Okay, so one of which start with easily digestible macros. That means your protein, your fat, and your carbs. They need to be easy for your gut to digest. Whether people want to believe it or not, uncooked cruciferous vegetables, those sorts of things, very difficult for your stomach to digest those. Uh, in comparison to ripe fruits, um, much easier to digest. Um, so that's just a simple example, but you wanna stay away from foods that are difficult to digest. Uh, another example would be coconut oil. Coconut oil is not only a great fat, it also fights endotoxins. Endotoxins can be in your intestines, cause a lot of problems. Um, it's very healthy for your metabolism. So again, that's another type of food, easy to digest and, and good for you. You wanna eat regularly. Um, I've talked before, I used to fast every day, uh, probably pushing a decade. Uh, I was low carb much longer than that, fried my thyroid. Um, you wanna have stable blood sugars. The reason you wanna have stable blood sugars, if you don't, if they drop, which is normal if you don't eat, uh, your body, if it doesn't get food, will kick in stress hormones to produce the sugar, uh, the glucose that your body needs to function, okay? So rather than doing that, rather than going through that stress-based process, just give your body food on a regular basis, okay? And then we wanna see increased blood flow to the intestines um, and that, we see that when you have a healthier metabolism, this isn't necessarily something you can do, I guess. It's more of an example of what can happen when you follow some of these things. I made a video about foods that you can eat that are easy to, easy to digest and are helpful for your metabolism. And when, when you improve your metabolism, blood flow goes up. Blood flow in the intestines to the intestines is a good thing, okay? We want to eat foods that are protective to the GI tract. I already talked about coconut oil and its role in fighting endotoxins. Another thing is raw carrot. Um, and I gotta give credit to uh, Ray Pete for this combination, his carrot salad's famous. I try to do it every day. Um, lower stress levels. Obvious there's ways to lower stress levels physically in your life, but also Things like consuming salt, if, if you, we have to learn to listen to our bodies. If you're craving salty food, your body's trying to tell you something. If you're craving sweets, your body's trying to tell you something. We know that salt can counteract cortisol, lower stress levels. Um, and so stress increases absorb, 
absorption of the bacterial endotoxins, what we were talking about, okay? So um, lowering your stress hormones is a huge thing, okay? Now, I've, I've mentioned a little bit about endotoxins, and that's important to remember because one of the first defenses against these endotoxins is your liver health. If your liver is healthy, it can detoxify those things. But when your liver is not healthy, what happens next, your thyroid hormones are activated basically in your, th in your liver. They're activated in other organs, but a big part of it occurs in your liver. You go to T4 to T3. When your liver isn't doing good, your thyroid function will not be doing good. When your thyroid is not doing good, you have low metabolism. Again, we're back to this uh, less blood flow to the intestines. Uh, we have hormone problems. For example, when you're not producing pregnenolone, pregnenolone can help fight endotoxins. So all this stuff fits together. Okay, I, I didn't want to get too deep into the weeds on these five points about the mechanisms that are going on. I kind of grazed over those. But if you follow these five things, um, your gut health will improve. Um, so let me know in the comments, does this make sense? Um, have you tried any of these things? And, and just give me the feedback in the comments. It's helpful for me. It's, it's helpful for other people. Um, speaking of which, hope the video was helpful. I will see you in the next one, guys. Thanks.